Thank you. So Dr. Davis talked about the science around wireless radiation. Dr. Naj talked about clinical work and environmental environmental illness, and it all ties together because what's happening now with 5G is going to add more more electromagnetic radiation into the environment. And we know that because industry says that in countries that allow lower levels of this radiation, those countries need to change their limits to accommodate the full 5G rollout, and in fact, the full 4G rollout. There's several reports written on that. So I got started on this um, several years ago, and I had this assumption that, of course, they pre-market tested cell phones and wireless. My daughters were using the cell phone all the time to talk to my grandmother because it was free. My cell phone had free long distance, and that's how we did our long distance. And that is a myth that I just wanted to start with that. The EPA was defunded uh, 20 years ago fully. They did not set proper safety limits. Um, they never set, I'm sorry, safety limits on electromagnetic radiation, in fact, because they were told that they cannot even do research after having decades of a robust research program. And they were amidst, they were literally in the middle of developing uh, safety limits. And then they were cut off. So the first thing I learned um, was that, which I didn't know, I didn't know my phone emitted radiation, is that every, every wireless device is a, is a two-way there's a two-way system, and it's a two-way microwave radio. So your cell phone is radiating to the cell tower, and the cell tower is radiating back to the cell phone. Um, and similarly, your laptop is communicating, which is radiating, because wireless radiation is how the, the data travels invisibly, to the base station, which is the, the router, the, um, the router modem, and then back and forth. As well, your decked phone your home cordless phone emits radiation to the base station the, that people often put right in their bedroom next to their bed. And it's back and forth. The baby monitor to the base station, which I had a family member over, um, and she brought her whole baby monitor situation. Um, and I realized that, that she had it. And, and she not only that, but she had the, the base station on her body because she was carrying it around so she could hear the baby. And... All of these devices have fine print warnings that they should be at a distance because they're only tested for our outdated inadequate limits at a distance. Um, and as well, Bluetooth, the headsets, the peripherals for all of our devices. So what I'm showing you now, and I love history, I've been fascinated by history and by what other countries are doing, is actually a large scale on the, um, on the right side is a bus in Cyprus. That is the back of the bus. And I have the translation here that the um, Children's, the Cypress Committee on Environment and Children's Health sent me as to what it says. Don't irradiate me. Learn how to protect me. This radiation is possibly carcinogenic. Because in Cyprus, they have a massive public education campaign that just, just was launched a few months ago. Um, and actually, for several years, they've been working. I didn't bring it here, but there's a video. They have all sorts of PSA videos on how to reduce exposure to cell phones, to wireless, etc. And that is in collaboration with the Department of Health. The Archbishop Macarius Hospital in Cyprus um, is the first hospital I know of to replace Wi-Fi with Ethernet in the pediatric units. And they also have an education program to keep cell phones away from children. Um, that they, and they have brochures. So I have a little poster that they have that's in Greek. But then part of their brochure over there, which is online on our website, um, is simple steps on how to protect children, uh, you know, uh, deactivate your cell phones. Um, they, they have signs on the walls, and they have a PowerPoint presentation as well. So that's happening now, and that was with the, de the Department of Health, the Department of the Environment, and the director of the hospital. And there's a, this great picture of uh, the donation of the laptops and the, the press conference. So French Polynesia, ha also, um, as well as France, by the way, has a public health campaign with videos and brochures for the public. And what I love about this one-minute video that they made to educate the community is how they've addressed all the different ways 
we are exposed to wireless both outside and inside. So here's outside, and I'm going to play the video, and the translation's at the bottom, actually. This is very short. Oh, there might not be sound yet. Although it's in. Sorry, I, that's too loud. I can't figure out how to load. Avis quotidienne. Pour s'en protéger efficacement et bien utiliser son mobile à la maison comme au travail, adoptons les bonnes pratiques. Retrouvez toutes les informations sur djun.ps. Um, yeah, okay. I'm just going to show an image here. So they have outside. Um, inside. The house, you know, the phone, the router, um, the the video gaming console in the nursery, the baby monitor, and then and that's really it. it. And then the rest was showing. Um, we have this on our YouTube channel. So if you want to learn more about anything, we have playlists: one on international action, one on Wi-Fi in school, one on cell phones, 5G, cell tower. Um, over 20 governments recommend reducing radio frequency, especially to children. So I have a couple of them up here. Each of these countries don't do the same thing, though. So the UK has um, quite hidden a statement that says government advice is to be on the safe side and limit mobile phone use by children. Um, and then there's more, like uh, France has several pages on how to reduce exposure. Um, as well as uh, India has 10 recommendations and has much lower allowable limits for cell towers. We have all of this under policy on our site, and it's, it's interesting to see all the graphics that they've done. Whereas in um, the United States, in the CDC, we have basically two tips. It says, if you are worried about cell phone use, follow the tips below. No one wants to be worried. Uh, and they don't talk about anything other than Get a hands-free handset and use a speakerphone, and it's not their advice. It's the if you are worried. So that's why the other countries that we've identified, that's their advice, knowing that it will take many more bodies to be the statistics that will lead to, uh, to where everyone is in agreement that cell phone, that wireless radiation causes cancer. Right now we're in that situation, as shown by the video, where there are independent scientists and then there are industry-funded or loyal connected groups. And so it is stated there's no consensus. Um, but when you look at the money, uh, there's a different picture. Now, what I wanted to point out that I think is extremely interesting in being in California, and I'm from the D.C. area, is that the California Department of Public Health, is everyone aware that the California Department of Public Health released recommendations like how to reduce exposure to your cell phone? Two years ago? No. So that was released. There's a CBS piece, which I don't have loaded, but you can watch. Um, it explains how to reduce exposure to cell phone radiation, when the radiation is high. However, these recommendations were actually developed a decade ago, and they were drafted and redrafted and drafted and redrafted. And the first recommendations, which actually include recommendations by Dr. Herberman and Dr. Davis um, at the um, Pittsburgh Medical Centers that were developed a decade ago, also have a whole, so I, we have about 120 pages of the drafts that were only released in 2017. Uh, one title section is what can state governments and its employees do to lower potential risks from cordless phones and cell phones? And it talks about how state employees could avoid purchasing cordless phones for office use. And it has recommendations for the families of employees. And it also says that it is the consensus of the scientists that we should recommend reducing exposure because there was enough research to have that approach to this issue, knowing that it would take years of exposure to see long-term impacts. And I think about that, you know, even here, look, we've got antenna, 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 uh, antenna, um, the router over there. And the workers, this issue of worker health is, I think, the most important one. Um, because many people are in positions where they can't do 
all the recommendations that Environmental Health Trust recommends are not an option in various jobs where you're told what to do and you don't have a choice. I know that the United Educators of San Francisco issued a resolution in 2018 on enhancing technology safety to look at the development of best practices for mobile devices um, and look at radio frequency radiation in the schools and posting the California Department of Health uh, safety guidelines in every classroom and informing parents about that. There are also, uh, we have a whole page on our site with different PTAs, teacher unions, and educational associations. They've done reports, issued resolutions for years, especially in uh, Canada, actually, on wireless radiation and the health of the teachers and the students. Um, with recommendations on how to reduce exposure. Of course, now we're in a whole other place with 5G, which I'm going to sort of jump to. I just want to show this. This is uh, in Italy, the St. Augustine School. Um, you know, there's a ceremony, and there, he's, the counselor is ceremoniously re removing the router from the classroom. And there are bans and restrictions on Wi-Fi in school in several countries. Again, Belgium, uh, France, Israel, Cyprus, French Polynesia have all banned Wi-Fi from nursery school, uh, Cyprus from elementary schools, and in France they have a certain tier, it's restricted, and also um, it's always turned off. So like right now, I'm not using wireless. I, don't, I hope no one is on their computer on Facebook or whatever, but yet we have all these transmitters always transmitting. And when you think about 5G as well and all of the antennas, the new network that we're going to have, that's going to all be more antennas close to us, which are always radiating even if we're not using them. And this picture was actually sent to me, I believe, from California that you've seen, which is a window with the antennas uh, right outside, which is happening all over the country right now. Yet internationally, there has been, this has just raised everyone's awareness about this issue because when you see a, a pole put in front of your home or your window, you start to ask yourself, is this safe? Um, so in the United States, I know Los Altos just uh, passed an ordinance with um, that would not allow these antennas in the residential areas with a 500-foot setback from schools. That just happened. It's not on our website yet. Uh, Petaluma uh, and Fairfax and Mill Valley have different prohibitions with distances to keep them away from homes in residential areas. Burlington, Massachusetts came up with a recertification, a, a way to... Um, before you can put an antenna up, they have a recertification process that the carriers must go through, and they also charge for the different certifications that they do. Uh, and here, another example of what communities are doing in Hallandale Beach, Florida, they issued a resolution on 5G small cells. And actually, there's many examples of this. It's just a sampling. In Italy, there are 13 local governments issuing resolutions against the 5G rollout. And I believe there are more because I keep getting uh, updates on that, and I haven't updated this, this slide yet, actually. So there's a lot happening there. In Switzerland, as Dr. Davis talked about, there are resolutions by um, specific localities, and they've actually been, in two of them, able to stop the next uh, the sighting of, of uh, new antennas until there is more work done on understanding the safety implications. In the United Kingdom, councils have resolutions. Um, Belgium uh, actually halted, and it was a temporary halt, because in Belgium you would have to change their radiation, their allowable limits for radiation, to put in the network. And so they were able to halt that because the, they, they couldn't, they didn't want to increase those levels to that degree. So that's sort of happening now. Um, there should probably be an update soon on that. I know in Austria, the parliament just commissioned a study on the health effects of 5G, but interestingly, it's being uh, headed by technology groups. So we, you know, there's who is issuing the report is a really important question. In New Hampshire, 
They passed uh, 522, Bill 522, and it's an act establishing a commission to study the environmental and health effects of 5G. And what's incredible about this bill is actually the questions that are asked for the commission, which are, for example, why have more than 220 of the world's leading scientists signed on to an appeal by to the to the WHO and United Nations um, when you know nothing has been done? There's actually this amazing list of questions. I would ask you to go to that bill and check it out. It's also a model for communities to do. This is an example of how the comparison between the United States and, and some other countries that allow less radiation. Now, there are a lot of ways to, um, there are a lot of ways, but the limits are a little complicated, so this is just for the 900 megahertz uh, radio frequency electrical sphere, because there are different allowable levels depending on um, what unit you're looking at. This is, I just love this picture. This is from the Senate of the Italian Republic um, when they filed motions on 5G. And in Italy as well, there have been several lawsuits that have been won by workers who have developed tumors and had long-term use of cell phones. And they've actually won, and it has been stated that the, the tumors were tied. As tumors were tied to the cell phone use, then that, those workers can be entitled to money. Um, in terms of union involvement in the United States, I have two images there. One is from a press conference that uh, Senator Blumenthal held several months ago, and you'll see the, uh, David Widlich, and I'm sorry if I'm saying his name wrong, of the Communications Worker of America, raising another important issue related to 5G. I'll just read his quote. We really need to study how the RF may impact a person working on telephone poles where they're adding all these additional towers. We need to be more outspoken, not only for workers, but for the public. And this is something that uh, workers have raised with me as well, is they don't want to work on poles or near poles if there's going to be all of these antennas hanging uh, every, every block, or really a couple a block. I mean, what is that going to mean? In addition to if a car hits it and then the, the pole falls over. Um, yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, so I'm going to get to the, the firefighters. So in Los Angeles... Um, they've actually been a very effective lobby group and have managed to get exemptions in AB 57 and SB 649, which was not signed by the governor. But these are um, bills which have, would have streamlined antennas, uh, streamlining really 5G, although it's 4G densification. Um, but they have been testifying, and you can go to our website and YouTube and actually watch the three-minute clips of them testifying, comparing wireless to tobacco and not wanting these on their stations or right in front of their stations. And we actually, uh, you know, we're, we just came from a conference, the first national medical, the U.S. medical training conference on electromagnetic fields, and had uh, Dr. Hauser present brain scans, which, and everyone, Dr. Davis and Dr. Nash both presented as well. Um, but Dr. Hauser was there, who also presented on brain scans of firefighters. And several years ago, uh, when antennas were first put on uh, a station, um, because of symptoms that the firefighters uh, were start, started to have, there was a study, and then the International um, Firefighters Association actually issued a resolution against antennas on their stations. And I'll just read what Dave Galati, the president of the L.A. County Firefighters Local 1014 said, which was, as firefighters and paramedics, we live in these firehouses. What effect will these towers have on us? What are the risks to our neighbors? It's a no-brainer that L.A. County should at least have done a proper study before putting a 200-foot high-power microwave antenna on top of our heads. And I'm not going to go into all of these, but there are, these are different policies to reduce electromagnetic fields in the different countries that are doing them. Um, and we have this on our site. We talked about, uh, actually, yeah, we, uh, so we talked about San Francisco passing the ordinance, which was not implemented. But then later, Berkeley came around and said, okay, we're going to do it, but we're going to tighten up the language 
so that it's exactly factual and see what will happen there. It was initially proposed in 2010, passed in 2015. So Berkeley has passed and is implemented and it is active. Their uh, cell phone right to know ordinance, which informs you at point of sale if you carry or use your phone in a pants or shirt pocket or tucked into a bra when the phone is turned on and connected to a wireless network, you may exceed the federal guidelines for exposure to radio frequency radiation. And the potential risk is greater for children was part of the first uh, passed ordinance. And then they took that out in order to move it through because it was challenged all the way up to the Supreme Court. This was actually from the San Francisco uh, cell phone right to know law that was passed. And I have another picture of the poster right there that you would have received that I don't think anyone's aware of. And Right. Right. And one thing I wanted to point out in terms that Dr. Davis talked about the Harvard report that talks about the influence of industry into this issue is that the lawyers who were the telecom lawyers who fought the city, there are two lawyers who were identified, and one is Brendan Carr, who is now our, at one of our FCC commissioners, but at the time was working for industry as their lawyer and was the point person uh, on the San Francisco ordinance. And you can go online and read the press release uh, about that. I'm going to just fast forward a little bit. But I wanted to show you this. So, you know, we're, we're sold a, a bag of goods. We're, we're told your devices were made for amazing. And you see all of these devices and how close they are to the kids. Um, and this is scientific imaging that um, Environmental Health Trust and colleagues from uh, engineers from Brazil work on. Whoops, uh, worked on showing the uh, the radiation coming out of the antenna, just to sort of make the invisible uh, visible. They're actually <laughs> done to look at the absorption into the tissue, but it's also useful to show show people in talk so you can see that you can't see it, but it is very much there. And devices should not be on the lap. They state they should not be on the lap because they're actually tested at a distance. So in Maryland, the I'm just jumping to schools briefly. The this, the 19-member panel of pediatricians, Maryland government officials recommended reducing exposures in the classroom and how to reduce exposure in the classroom based on the, the state of the situation. We also have the Collaborative for High Performance Schools, which issued recommendations. Um, actually, they have criteria on how to reduce exposure for schools. And they also have criteria on VOCs and all kinds of um, environmental building so I wanted to just briefly talk about how you can reduce exposure, much like Catherine was talking about with an air tube headset. First, when it comes to cell phones, keep the phone away from your head and body. Use a speakerphone or an air tube wired headset. Don't carry the phone on your body and minimize your overall cell phone use by using wired technology like wired phones whenever possible. Um, instead of home corded phones, use um, cordless phones, use a corded phone at home. We have like 10 of them in our house, so, you know, with a really long cord, so I can, I can wash the dishes and I can be on the phone at the same time. And it, it, there are some challenges where you say, hold on, I have to go to the next room, but uh, it seems really reasonable compared to all the health issues that, um, you know, that, that we're talking about here. So... Uh, turn your phone on airplane mode with Bluetooth, Siri, location, everything, all your antennas off. And if you have to turn on an antenna, turn on one at a time, rather than having them all on, transmitting all the time. And prefer hardwired computers for, instead of doing your social media, you know, move stuff to safe technology. So if I'm on Facebook, which I am for work, or my kids are on social media, it's on a wired home computer. And that also helps because they don't have it everywhere they go, which is just a complete distraction and not helpful to their, to their edification, to anything, really, to interacting with people and to, uh, to relationships. So 
So get a corded landline, and you can forward your phone to this line when you walk into your home and turn your phone off. Another thing is having a sleep sanctuary. Now, one of the problems with this, and I'm just going to read just a couple recommendations here, but is that with 5G and with all of these antennas that we're going to be having in our neighborhoods and in front of our homes, especially in the cities, this will be not possible because you can turn off your phone, you can turn off your gaming console, you can do all of these things that I'm about to tell you, but if there's an antenna right outside your home, and especially a window, which will allow more of the, the, the radiation in, that will be nonstop, and we, we can't control that. This is why this policy change is meaningful, long-lasting change. So, but at night, your body can rest and recover, and of course, that's when your memories um, become solidified, and most important, one of the most important things is your sleep. So turning off all the wireless uh, at night is often a first step that people take, making sure you don't have screens or electronics in your room, um, having darkness, complete darkness uh, to mitigate the light that can go through your, your eyelids, sleeping away from utility meters and electric panels, which emit extremely low frequency fields, um, and also the smart meters, which have wireless in them as well, and no electronics or electrical cords under your bed. Um, and remember that virtual assistance is Alexa, all of these things that people are getting that they put in their homes and they talk to, that is like, a, that is emitting, it's like a base station. It is just emitting radiation all the time, waiting for you to tell it to do something, connecting to the router, and um, you can't even go buy a, a wired one if you wanted one, which, you know, maybe my dad got one and, and didn't even think about that it was wireless, and now they like it. And I'm thinking, where are our consumer options? So this is a whole other avenue of addressing this, is also calling for the safe technology that we as consumers want to buy so that we have options. And remember that they also have a fine print warning stating they should be kept a minimum distance of 20 centimeters between the radiator and your body in order to meet our government, our outdated and non-protective government limits, but nonetheless there are limits. Um, and yet, just Google child with one of these uh, virtual assistants and you will see all series of kids hugging them, singing, being sung songs to them, hearing stories from them by their bedroom, you know, near their pillow. And parents are completely unaware of that they emit radiation and that there is a large body of science showing damaging effects. Use not use corded mice and headphones, keyboard speakers. Your cell phone can actually be corded. It's a little bit complicated depending on your make and model, which is something that we need to fix. Like, it should be easy. You should be able to just plug your phone in with Ethernet to your router. But for many phones, you actually can do this, and it's been a lifesaver for people who are at work or, or at ho their home office, and they want to be, you know, have their phone to be texting with their spouse, etc. So this all can be done, and you can research your make and model to learn that. Keep laptops and tablets on a on a table, not a lap, and I, yeah, yeah, I will, I'm, 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 actually, I'm, I need to finish right now. So, um, the American Academy of Pediatrics has recommended making, uh, rec recommended how to reduce exposure to cell phone radiation for families, and they came out with recommendations after the National Toxicology Program study. Now, they have not looked at, uh, 5G, although they do actually have a page on cell towers, which you can go to uh, on our website. You can search American Academy of Pediatric Cell Towers or go to their um, Healthy Child website where they talk about the studies that have shown impacts to sleep and other, other issues. Um, but what we don't have, I just want to say this quick before I talk about this recommendation, is it, we don't have the, the reviews of the research with reports from a lot of these large organizations that we need to have um, and um, that's another avenue of 
of opening up this issue. So one of the recommendations that the American Academy of Pediatrics makes is avoid making calls in cars, elevators, trains, and buses because the cell phone works harder to get a signal through metal, so the power level increases. So you can think of the radiation like you think of sunlight. You know, it bounces, so it comes in, it can reflect, it can be absorbed. Similarly, radio frequency can do that as well. You think about cars where children are left in cars, the windows were rolled up, and it got so hot inside, but it's not, it's not as hot outside. That's about reflection and absorption that happens with electromagnetic fields. Similarly, a car can have very high levels. And now the cars, of course, have their transmitters in them for the new smart cars. And with 5G, which is going to be having car, self-driving cars communicating with other cars, there's radar on, on a lot of cars that we have and more and more sensors and antennas. Um, Pre-download pre instead of streaming music and video in your car so um, easily, like I think it's Spotify, you can have a playlist that's already downloaded. It doesn't have to be streaming. Um, and we have all of these. And disable the wireless antennas, like the Bluetooth, turn off antennas uh, in your car. In addition to your personal devices, also your car has antennas that you can just turn off. We have all this and more on our website, ehtrust.org, and here are some examples of the safety cars that we have outside that have tips on how to reduce exposure, and then we have several web pages dedicated to everything that we've talked about. Here's our site, and the best way to navigate it right now until we update it, which we're in the middle of doing, is to kind of hover over the top, the key issues, policy, science, like under policy, you can get to the California Department of Health uh, recommendations and